ಸ್ಪಿರಿಟ್ so i hope i hope you are all doing well uh, um, we were reading uh in the last discussion yesterday we read about the spirit of reading bhagavad gita so we discussed okay uh can we do a quiz the first spirit is okay so write down the first spirit in one sentence the spirit number 1 for reading bhagavad gita do you need some things while i open it up for you spirit number 1 write in a one short sentence like formulate the sentence very nicely that it covers or it conveys most of the idea which which is there Krishna is the absolute truth. Okay. So please write down in your own words, in one sentence. Uh, try to summarize or as much as you can, uh, and express in one sentence. So let's see who is able to. capture the most in one short sentence it should not be a very long essay very short sentence krishna is the absolute truth that is very good others also please write nobody is writing am i audible okay abhishek bansal prabhu has written two points now vyasdev writes shri bhagwan uvacha all great personalities like narada etc except krishna as supreme and i said just write one sentence which uh, uh conveys uh, as much as possible right as much as you can condense in one sentence like write a sutra <laughs> write a formula so of course you cannot cover everything in one sentence but whatever you feel like covering different people might focus on different aspects but that is all right so you just write only one person is writing only abhishek bansal prabhu is writing krishna is the absolute truth and is accepted by spiritual authorities very good yes anybody else would like to write nobody okay so we will go with abhishek prabhu answer or which is the only answer we have received krishna is the absolute truth and uh, he is the so the speaker of bhagavad gita the teacher of bhagavad gita is krishna who is the absolute truth and he is accepted so by all the spiritual authorities all the great authorities like uh, vyasdev bhagavad gita itself uh, the acharyas of uh, the recent age as well as uh the mahajanas of uh very good right okay spirit number 2 please summarize in uh one sentence spirit number 2 let's see please don't hesitate uh you may focus on different points different people different devotees may like different points or they may write different points and may formulate sentences in different ways somebody may write very poetically somebody may write in plain english that is all right try to write as best as you can
notes are there right in front of you in case you want to see. Gita teaches us to become neutral, which makes us a right thinker. Okay, good answer. Gita teaches us to be neutral, which makes us a right thinker. Anybody else? We have Kunal Prabhu, who is B. Seju, I don't know. Abhishek Bansal Prabhu, Preet, who is Preet, I am not sure. I don't know. Maybe you can like introduce yourself. Viraj Prabhu, Raj Kumar Prabhu, Chahat Prabhu, Rajat Prabhu. I don't know who is D. Seju, 7574, and Preet. Maybe you can introduce yourself. We should always be unbiased as well. Yes, very good. We should be unbiased. So the spirit is that we can understand Bhagavad Gita uh, only when we are unbiased. A person who is right thinker can teach Bhagavad Gita to others. Yes, very good. So, um, okay, you are third year undergrad. Please, okay. Welcome, Hare Krishna. I'm sorry I didn't uh, notice. So, uh, we can become, uh, yes, so Bhagavad Gita uh, makes us right thinker and also Bhagavad Gita uh, can be understood when we are neutral, when we are a right thinker. So we have to be neutral, means we should not have uh, preconceived biases against Krishna. Oh, this must be an ordinary person, oh Krishna is like this, Krishna is like that, or um, I am already so great, why should I hear Krishna? I block myself with my own uh, limited understanding, right? So I should be unbiased by everything. Uh, let's see, spirit number three, who would like to share? Spirit number three. Spirit number three. Please summarize in a sentence, spirit number three. Nobody? The text is there in front of you. You just have to summarize it. And whatever we discussed in the last discussion, if you remember, that's all right. Otherwise, just read the text. Okay. What I'm seeing here is uh, our devotees are not very good with open book exams. <laughs> Even if it is open book, everything is there. We should have a relationship with Krishna and we must accept all verses of Gita. Yes, very good. Thank you. So we must have a relationship. What kind of relationship? So basically a personal relationship. Personal relationship means we consider Krishna as our friend and we depend on him um, for everything. Just like we depend on our friend. Like what is, it, what, what is that? A friend in need is a friend indeed, right? So how do you know somebody is your friend? means whenever uh, for everything you turn towards him 
and seek his advice right that is the meaning of a, a real friend so krishna is our dear friend and uh, so this is a personal relationship means i ask uh, krishna like whenever actually in life at every step we need advice right so at every step we turn towards krishna and ask krishna should i do this or should i do that should i do this way or should i do that way so always i am uh, seeking krishna's uh, guidance in everything uh, and it is a personal relationship it's not impersonal impersonal means uh, some parmatma is there who will give me knowledge uh, automatically it is not impersonal it is personal we just like we have a very close friend so krishna is like a very close friend sitting with us uh, uh, let's say in our heart all the time and he is whom we can always uh, talk to whom we can always see right and strong so let's move on to the today's topic this is the five subject matters of bhagavad gita i think you all uh, uh, had a very detailed discussion during sir's bhagavad gita lecture series in lhc Uh, so we will this will be a revision for you so five topics are ishvara jiva kala prakriti and karma so amongst these five topics krishna deals mostly with the fifth topic karma means in throughout bhagavad gita krishna talks so much about karma karma means the form of duty that liberates us from the influence of ignorance so what is karma the definition of karma given here the definition of karma is the form of duty that liberates us from the influence of ignorance so now i think this definition clarifies many doubts right uh, somebody is uh, somebody let's say uh, is a professor he is a teacher he teaches let's say something uh, maybe he teaches algebra mathematics in the school so can he say this is my karma if i am a teacher i am mathematics teacher i go to school daily i teach my students algebra that's it and i come back uh, can i say this is my karma why no why no yes why yes nobody is answering so if i am just because this is connecting him with krishna as per the definition okay so this is not connecting him with krishna as per the definition okay so the definition says it should liberate us from the influence of ignorance right and if i if i teach students simply uh, just plain algebra it is not helping them in any way right it is not freeing them from the influence of ignorance right so uh, the a, a, a teacher uh, a teacher who takes up the karma he should teach in such a way that students also become right thinkers students become right thinkers and they what is the difference between karma and duty okay so karma means the form of duty that liberates us from the influence of ignorance so karma as is defined here is a form of duty right so a person can say this is my official duty to teach algebra to the students right but it is not liberating him or her from the influence of ignorance that is why this is not the karma as per the definition so what will be the karma for that person when he inspires uh, his students to uh, become free from ignorance and in turn he also uh, uh, makes himself free from ignorance right that will be uh, karma the right the karma as defined in bhagavad gita uh, thus lord krishna prescribes duties in the form of karma yoga jnana yoga dhyana yoga and bhakti yoga 
the yoga system that is spoken in Bhagavad Gita is duty because anything that is duty must connect you to Lord Krishna. Yes. So our ignorance, layers of ignorance can be taken away completely if we connect ourselves with Krishna. Right? Mm. I give you an example. When I first uh, tried to read Bhagavad Gita, I was very young. Um, I got a book of Bhagavad Gita, means it was Gita Press Bhagavad Gita. Um, I started reading it and I could not understand most of the terms. Like even the terms were so difficult to understand. Uh, I read the first chapter, it was just names and that's what I thought, okay, they're just names and some personalities and some uh, background is happening. But uh, as soon as I came to second chapter, everything became um, totally ununderstandable. So, that is, <coughs> so means so much ignorance. Uh, but when, because, why? Because in that version of Bhagavad Gita, um, they presented everything uh, where Krishna was almost absent. But as soon as um, when we hear from Sir, from Srila Prabhupada, the Krishna is come, he comes into picture, then immediately the meaning of things becomes so clear. Like this very common term is Brahman. Right? This very common term throughout Bhagavad Gita which comes is Brahman. And I have means before uh, hearing it from Sir and Bhagavad Gita or from uh, Prabhupada's uh, Bhagavad Gita. Actually mostly from Sir. Uh, before hearing it from Sir, I was, I had heard this term so many times, it didn't make any sense to me. <laughs> right? So, even if I have heard this term Brahman, Brahman, Brahman or Brahma Jyoti, this and that, but never made any sense to me what is it. I didn't even uh, bother to question about it. But when I heard from Sir, then okay, Brahma Jyoti means Krishna as a person. As soon as Krishna came into picture, things became so clear. Even today if you ask any spiritualist, what is Brahman? He won't be able to explain. He will say, oh this is unexplainable, this is this, this is that. But as soon as you uh, connect it with Krishna, everything becomes so much uh, free from ignorance. Right? Okay, simple. Krishna's bodily effulgence, that is Brahman. That's what Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. Brahmano hi pratishtaham. Uh, okay. So, uh, what I mean to say here is the idea is that uh, unless we connect with Krishna, we cannot be completely free from ignorance. So, connecting with Krishna liberates us immediately from ignorance. There are many nice verses. Uh, uh, in the Bhagavatam, there is a verse which, which uh, gives an analogy that as soon as we connect with Krishna, it is like when there is a lot of fog, in, this, in the winters you see a lot of fog, right? And uh, you cannot even see, like actually in Punjab it is very very dense fog. Kanpur also gets a lot of fog, that's true, but Punjab was very severe. So a lot of fog was there and how will the fog removed? When the sun comes, as soon as the sun rises, then the fog is cleared, right? Because of the sun rays, the fog is cleared. So similarly Krishna is like that sun, and the fog, that all our ignorance is like that fog, which does not allow us to see things. And as soon as Krishna uh, arrives in our life, all the ignorance is destroyed. So that is why it is said, you cannot, we cannot become free from ignorance uh, unless we connect ourselves with Krishna. And this yoga helps us connect with Krishna immediately. Like I can give you a very nice example here. Uh, there are so many teachers whom we study from, right? I have... I went to school, I went to high school, uh, then uh, during plus one, plus two, I went to another school and I had so many teachers who will teach me physics, chemistry, mathematics and so many teachers I have had all through my life. But can I say I was, free, I was freed from ignorance by them? I can uh, very confidently say I was not freed from ignorance. I didn't even know what to do what to do with life, what to do in life, right? But as soon as we uh, uh, meet Bhagavad Gita, or let's say, I had Sar is also teaching, Sar is also uh, teaching so many courses, but he is teaching also about Krishna. And that uh, immediately liberates us 
from the influence of internet. Right? So this is a very nice example how a teacher uh, can uh, do karma by connecting everybody with Krishna. Because teacher's job is to make the students think, to make the students uh, uh, become open to knowledge. And that can be done only uh, if Krishna enters into our life. So you have to start, okay, okay we cannot, uh, we may not be able to uh, immediately talk about Krishna, but start from very basic questions, okay, what is human life? What is the difference between human being and animal? What is the difference between human being and uh, AI machines, right? So these are the questions which will at least bring them to a level that they start understanding that their physics, their current understanding of physics, chemistry, mathematics does not uh, explain um, many, many aspects of nature, many, many, most of the aspects of uh, nature, right? It is very limited. Physics can describe motion of uh, uh, objects on the table <laughs> or motion of planets. It may model the motion of planets around the sun, but uh, the real questions or in so many questions which actually we ask, it cannot answer. So the question is, uh, the battle Arjuna fought against Kauravas was duty or karma? If karma, how did it remove ignorance? Very good question. So when uh, Arjuna fought the battle, was it duty or karma? Uh, yes, it was duty because uh, he, he is a warrior and uh, he is supposed to fight. When the, when the fight is there, he should not run away from fight just because uh, his family members are on the other side. So it's, it's his duty to fight, to c c complete his uh, responsibility. But also this is karma yoga. Uh, why? Because he is not fighting for his own pleasure. He is fighting for Krishna's pleasure. Means he is fighting on Krishna's behalf. Krishna said, I want to uh, uh, reduce the burden of earth by killing all these demons who have assembled together. <laughs> right? So in that killing, Krishna told Arjuna, Nimitta Matra Bhava Savitachi, that you become the instrument. And Arjuna became the instrument. Right? So that is why it becomes uh, yoga. Because he is obeying Krishna's order. He's following Krishna's order. Right? Okay. Uh, so you're doing something, but you're not getting connected to Lord Krishna means that you're wasting your human life. So this is the mo most talked about subject in Bhagavad Gita. We must be situated in the yoga system. And according to Bhagavad Gita, the highest form of yoga is Bhakti Yoga. So, uh, karma. Um, the, the fifth thing is karma. So, what is the highest form of karma? That is working for Krishna, and that is called bhakti yoga. When we work for Krishna. Uh, finally, uh, so sir concludes by uh, this first topic, Ishvara. So, what is the meaning of Ishvara? So, or meaning of Bhagavan. The meaning of Bhagavan is given by Parashar Muni in Vishnu Puran. So Bhagavan has six opulences, all beauty, all wealth, all power, all knowledge, all fame, and all renunciation. This is Bhagavan. And the goal of Gita is to know him and, con and get connected to him through prescribed yoga system, in particular Bhakti Yoga. Okay. Uh, the conclusion. Okay, let's read the conclusion now. So Gita is the complete science, science of both spirit and matter from a holistic perspective. This book provides timeless science. It should be timeless. <laughs> timeless science that is applicable to every human race in every corner of the society. Bhagavad Gita informs us that we are tiny divine particles having the same quality as that of Krishna. Daily, daily bathing in the message of Gita will help us revive our divine spiritual qualities. Right. So, what, so this, this is the nature of Jiva, the nature of ourselves, that we are tiny divine particles, but in quality we are same as Krishna, in quantity we are tiny, but quality same as Krishna. So, 
therefore and reading bhagavad gita helps us revive our divine qualities which today we have forgotten right and the next is there has been debate amongst intellectuals about the chemical origin of life or life eternal bhagavad gita speaks of the latter our empirical observations show that matter comes from life not vice versa okay uh so the life is not a combination of chemicals right by combining chemicals you cannot make life but life gives rise to chemical combinations right life gives rise to chemical combination okay i'll give you an example uh in the nature do you find laptops in the nature do you find laptops nobody is answering do you find laptops in nature no why so this is laptop is just combination of silica uh, some steel to make the uh, connections and uh, some semiconductor devices silicon based devices basically semiconductors and then some plastic and uh, some other chemicals like led screen right so it is just combination of chemicals what is the probability to get this combination what is the probability to get a combination like this so which means if you are just searching in random let's say somebody goes to <laughs> outer space or somewhere let's in a forest where nobody lives and suddenly he sees an ipad there or laptop i uh, uh macbook there <laughs> can it happen so chemicals uh, this kind of chemical combinations do not exist in nature but laptops do exist and why do they exist why do we have laptops why do we have laptops because of steve jobs like steve jobs thought of this idea okay we can we can make a macbook or a, a mac a macintosh computer because humans have made it yes so some human or some humans they brainstormed and made this uh, beautiful combination of uh, beautiful chemical combination so then tell me which comes from what comes from what matter comes from life means laptops come from life or life comes from laptop or life comes from matter what comes from what does life come from chemicals or chemicals come from life what is answering matter comes from life yes chemicals come from life matter comes from life yes <clears throat> true very true so it's very simple right it's very simple understanding you will never find let's say the in this example matter has come from life yes everywhere matter comes from life um newton's first law says that <laughs> unless you disturb something it will stay in the same state it won't move it won't so it is life only which is propelling things otherwise things don't move newton's first law says that you have to apply force means you have to have uh, an ag- agent to perform some action on it right um so always matter comes from life okay uh so who are, we are servants and who is the master so gita answers this question very lucidly lord krishna is the only master so he is also known by different traditions by different names as allah jehova god so some days ago we were having this discussion of spirituality versus religion so spirituality means being able to recognize god um uh, in whatever name he is addressed right somebody may call 
Krishna as Allah, somebody may say Allah. What is the meaning of Allah? Allah means all, all benevolent, uh, means all merciful. Yes, Allah is all merciful. Some people also say Allah means all powerful. That is also correct. Krishna is all powerful. So, his another name is Allah. Uh, God means controller. Krishna is the supreme God. He is the controller of all controllers. Right? So, God is a very appropriate name for Krishna. So, like that, Krishna has got so many names. Uh, but the thing is that the principle, the principle of God, that is same. Okay. We crave for relationships, but all of them are temporary in this world. Some of them are even source of agony. Bhagavad Gita answers the nature of this pure relationship and its shelter. So what is that pure relationship? That is the relationship with Krishna. When we connect ourselves in yoga system with Krishna, we establish our divine relationship with Him. This in turn makes us makes our filial or worldly relationships also divine. So, uh, when you are uh, connected with Krishna, then your relationship with your parents also becomes divine. So, I am sure many of you are making your parents very happy these days by uh, becoming very obedient to them, serving them in so many different ways. Right? So, why this is possible? Because if you are connected with Krishna, then you naturally serve everybody, right? And you serve everybody uh, not for any mundane reason, but for a very divine reason. What is that reason? You understand that everybody is children of Krishna. Everybody is a child of Krishna, right? And you serve that person with the feeling that if I serve this person, then Krishna will become happy. When you serve your parents, you do it with a feeling that Krishna will become happy that I am serving my parents. And of course, the best form of service is you also help your parents to connect with Krishna, right? So th that way, your, you, your relationship will become absolutely divine. Everything here is temporary. So what is permanent? So Gita again provides wonderful answers, stating that shelter of Krishna, his abode, and his devotional service are permanent or eternal. Then, we are here in this material world because we want to become God. This is the tendency between us that I want, okay, I want to become happy. So let me use everything for my service. Let me use all the resources for my pleasure. That is the meaning of becoming God, right? And putting my uh, strong hand on others. See, I am. I, this is my, I have an, an upper hand on others. I am. I am the best. I am better than you. So you follow me. <laughs> Right? So these two tendencies are there within us, which because of which we are called, we want to become God. One is to uh, enjoy, the other is to control. I want to enjoy, I want to use everything in my service, in my for my pleasure, for my selfish pleasure. And the second is, I want to uh, show everybody that I am the best, I am better than you. Which means envy. So... Uh, so, anybody can cite the verse from Bhagavad Gita which says this? The desire to control, the desire to enjoy. These are the two uh, core reasons why we are in the material world. We are in the material consciousness, we are in the material plane, material space, when we have these two tendencies. Desire to enjoy, enjoy means exploiting everything for my own selfish uh, interest and the other is the desire to control means putting my upper hand on everybody. See, I am better than you. You better follow me. Better listen to me. Right? So, anybody knows the verse from Bhagavad Gita, which says this, which describes this tendency? Chahat Prabhu, Tarun Prabhu, Abhishek Prabhu. Okay, I give you some time. You can think about it. Okay, suppose you, ha suppose you have created a robot. You will make all plan in such a way that robot will follow you. Would you like a robot that will revolt against you? So that's the difference between you and God. The difference between me and God is that God has created me, but he has given me all the freedom. It is up to me to use my freedom, to use my free will to accept God or reject him. He is my loving father after all. Okay, so, uh, 
uh, that is it. And uh, Gita is a timeless science which has answers to all our thought provoking queries. So with that we can finish today's session because Sir has started class uh, on Facebook. So let's uh, meet there. Hare Krishna.